As Snapchat was growing in the mid-2010s, it was the biggest threat to incumbent social media up to that point. It was a product with disappearing photos, a huge amount of engagement, and it didn't even have a feed. Founder Evan Spiegel rejected a $3 billion offer from Mark Zuckerberg in 2013, just two years after the company was founded. I talked to current and former Snap engineers about life at the company, and here is what I learned. For most of its 14-year history, Snapchat has been branded as the anti-Facebook. Facebook is going to lose 2 million users under the age of 25 this year. And while the research firm predicts that Facebook-owned Instagram will pick up some of those lost users, competitor Snapchat will be adding even more in that age range to get us a check on the sector and the industry. And while Snapchat deliberately tried to and continues to try to counter position on the product front against Facebook, I learned by talking to a bunch of engineers and doing a lot of research that a lot of the engineering culture at Snap is derivative of the bigger tech players, including Meta, Google, Amazon, from the people who worked there and now who work at Snap. I broke this video down into three benefits of working at Snap and three drawbacks of working at Snap as an engineer. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments, which of the points I covered is the most meaningful for you? What matters the most? The first benefit I heard from many Snap engineers is you can combine innovation with impact at the company. Snapchat is known for its innovation when it comes to how consumers communicate and how they use technology. They pioneered the idea of a camera app. They invented the story format, which got copied by Facebook and then subsequently many other apps. And they also have tried many innovative products, hardware and software, for example, spectacles, even if a lot of them didn't work out. Of course, working on cutting edge products is catnip for an ambitious engineers who want to go work at Snap because they wanna go define the next paradigm of how consumers will use the technology that will dictate where the industry goes. And the benefit is that Snapchat does a lot of this innovative work while having a very engaged user base of hundreds of millions of DAU, daily active users. One of the engineers I talked to said that they can see the direct impact of their work because of the enormous scale of Snapchat in a way that most companies couldn't offer except for other big tech. And even if you compare Snapchat versus other big tech, Snapchat is quite a bit younger. And that means that a lot of the product, a lot of the tooling is more immature, which means that there's more opportunity for impact. So a good example is looking at the ad platform. So if you want to run an ad on Facebook and Google, those systems are extremely sophisticated compared to Snap, which is several years behind. It's a smaller company and has way less engineering resources allocated. And so if you look at where can you as engineer have a strong amount of impact in your org or in your company, it might frequently be easier to attain that at Snapchat. The second big pro of working at Snapchat is that the engineering talent is broadly very, very high at the company. You're working with some of the top engineers in the world. And of course, along with that comes really good learning opportunity and a way to accelerate your career because all these people are going to go on and do other companies, startups in the future that you can then join them at. A staff engineer I talked to who works out of the San Francisco office for Snapchat told me that he was surprised when he joined the company, how many people came from Google and Amazon now working with him at Snap. And he said that broadly, he would say that the bar to get into Snap is higher compared to those companies. The other thing I heard here is that Snapchat still feels fairly young and nimble. It's about 14 years old now, which is not super young. It's not a startup, but it's certainly much younger compared to the other big tech companies. And the result of that is that generally the processes and tooling at Snap is relatively modern. You don't have to spend as much time maintaining a big legacy system. And finally, the third huge benefit of working at Snap is money. Snapchat pays a high total compensation, a high TC, relative to the comparable level at other big tech companies. In fact, in 2017, which is the last time I did a full-on job search, I got six offers and Snap was by far the highest offer. Now I went back to Snapchat and within a few days, they massively increased their offer. The salary went from 160K to 180K. The signing bonus went from 10K to 100K, literally a 10X increase. And the equity package went from 600K to a million dollars. And that is back weighted. It was 10, 20, 30, 40 vesting. And the Snapchat offer I received actually had more than 50% equity compared to the second highest offer, which was from Facebook. One of the things I discovered while talking to so many engineers is that for in-demand roles, Snapchat has the ability and the willingness to give you a higher level compared to the level you probably would get at a larger legacy tech company like Google, Microsoft, etc. I know of at least three people who were able to land a significantly higher offer from Snapchat compared to any other offer because they came in at a higher level. They effectively got a promotion in that job hop.
In my case, this was being an Android developer in 2017, but it will depend on the macro environment and what the company prioritizes at that point. The other people I talked to, one of them was a security engineer at a time, but that was very essential to Snapchat. And then today you could imagine it being AI or maybe for Snapchat augmented reality, which is a really big priority for the company. Okay, now let's talk about the other side. What are the drawbacks, the cons of working as an engineer at Snapchat? And the first one that came up repeatedly is it's a very volatile environment. A lot of things change in a stressful way, and that can lead to a lot of pressure and a lot of disorganization. And you know, part of this is to be expected. Snapchat, the app was founded in a Stanford dorm room in 2011, and now they're a multi, multi-billion dollar company. So you should expect that things will evolve. And the initial engineers, the management, they're going to get turned over and they're going to have to bring in more mature engineers or managers and effectively professionalize it. And so you're going to have a lot of turmoil as you go through hyper growth. Experiencing growing pains while you're going through hyper growth is not unique to Snapchat. That is the story of Silicon Valley or any startup that has found product market fit. But I think what's unique about Snapchat is that they particularly have had a lot more turmoil because the highs have been very high and the lows have been very low. For example, there was a 12 month period in 2020, 2021, where the stock went up 500%. It was a huge runoff. And then in subsequent years, it fell 80%. So they've had a lot of ups and downs, I would say more so than a lot of other companies. Another reason for the volatility is that Snapchat is trying to become the leading player in augmented reality. And that's a field with a lot of innovation and change. So similar to AI, every few months you'll expect publications or new tools, techniques on the cutting edge of AR. And so if you're an engineer working on augmented reality or you're an engineer supporting someone who is in augmented reality, which is a big chunk of the company, you should expect a lot of rapidly changing priorities and workflows, tools and technology. The result of all that is you have a pretty high pressure engineering environment at Snapchat compared to peer companies. A second very clear theme I heard on the negative side for Snapchat engineering is a dissatisfaction with management. You know, people are generally willing and happy to work hard if they feel like they're being rewarded appropriately and there's a very clear goal line that they are working toward. However, that's not the case here. The engineers I spoke with are unhappy with management and senior leadership in particular at Snapchat. Only 25% of engineers approve of Evan Spiegel as CEO. One person in Santa Monica said, management is more concerned with managing up instead of supporting their team. And I heard repeatedly from other engineers that there's a lot of politics because of the dynamics of not knowing what will actually be worked on. And similar to Apple, Snapchat has a lot of power in their manager. So your manager will dictate in many ways your performance review and your promotion at the company. I have two reflections on why I think this is happening. Number one, I do think that back in the day, Snapchat was very much the it company. I have this really distinct memory in 2016, 2017, where it felt like Snapchat could do no wrong. They added the Discover feed, which is like basically TV in Snapchat. They had Snap Map and just felt like they were growing rapidly and nothing could stop them. And I feel like certainly that's not the case now. Snapchat feels to some degree like it's lost its way. It's not innovating. It's not as exciting as it once used to be. So I do think there is a genuine concern about, okay, what is the five or 10 year vision for Snapchat and how will it play in the broader social media landscape. However, another thing worth calling out here is that humans have a really hard time decoupling different problems. So uh, one of the big things people think about is compensation. And frankly, Snapchat has just done really poorly in the stock market in the past few years. And so most of the people I talk to are unhappy with their compensation because of the equity based component is way lower than what they would like. And if you're unhappy with that part of your work life, that can bleed over into how good do you think the strategy is or how much enjoyment do you have at work? And that's the sad reality of working at a public tech company is that the morale of the employees and the broader company is very much aligned to how is the stock doing that day or that month. I can tell you for Nvidia, for example, which has had a insane last couple of years, a lot of people I talk to there are very happy. And why wouldn't they be? Because their net worth has probably gone up way more than they could have imagined. And finally, the third and final drawback of working at Snapchat as an engineer is that they are multi-cloud. Something I didn't think about, didn't even realize would be an issue, but Snapchat uses both Google Cloud Platform, GCP, and AWS, Amazon Web Services. In the early days, Snapchat was actually famous for being one of the biggest customers on Google Cloud, as you can tell from this video 
from 2014. We launched on Google App Engine because I, I had used App Engine a couple times for, for some small projects. It's actually been very surprising for us to, and like uh, super fortunate to see Cloud Platform um, kind of grow its feature set almost perfectly in sync with our own feature needs. But in 2016, Snap made the decision that the risk of being locked into one particular cloud vendor was way too high and they wanted to diversify. So they made a deal with Amazon 2016 that they would guarantee a certain amount of spend over the next couple of years, which is a billion dollars, kind of a mind boggling amount. And so now Snapchat is in this dual situation where they have some services and some things on AWS and then some things still on GCP. I talked to an engineer who works on something related to the cloud at Snap, and he told me working across two clouds, Google and Amazon is annoying. And unfortunately, there's no easy resolution. It's gonna continue like that for the foreseeable future. One other quirk of Snap, I would say, is that they are headquartered in LA. And that was a really big deal earlier on when the vast majority of their team and engineers were in SoCal, that a lot of people would have to make a difficult decision on whether they wanna leave the Bay Area or Seattle and go down and live, relocate to LA. Now they're a bit more distributed, but I do think that is one of the big differences in culture between Snapchat and most of the other fan companies. Overall, my reflection of Snap as an engineer is that it feels like a patchwork coming from a lot of other companies. It has flavors of Meta, Amazon, Google, and Apple all inside it. Snapchat is what I would call in its adolescent phase, where it's a bit too young still to have a really clear differentiated culture. A lot of what I heard is, okay, there's a carryover of a tool or a process or a culture from the company that that person used to work at. If you work at Snap now, please do leave a comment. Let me know what part of this resonated with you or what you think I missed. If you're looking to get a job at one of the top companies like Snap, or you're looking to improve your performance at a competitive company, check out the platform I built called Taro. Taro contains expert-led courses about anything that you need to succeed in your career as a software engineer, whether that's finding a new job, onboarding, doing open source, doing side projects, or connecting with really smart people in the company or outside your company. Let me know what other company you are interested in having a deep dive for. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.